An excerpt from Tales from the Bottom of My Soul by David Kingston Ye. Chapter 3 Magic Carpet Ride. On a Sunday early in April, David and I took the 506 streetcar east across Toronto's Don Valley to the Rock Oasis Climbing Gym where David's friend Arthur worked part time. During the trip, the morning drizzle turned into a steady downpour and, although the stop was only two minutes from the venue, by the time we arrived we were both soaked through. I also realized we were up the block from where Marcus lived, but neither David nor I commented on that fact. The space was suitably cavernous, with vertical and canted walls covered with thousands of holds. David Usher was playing on the sound system and framed prints of ecstatic climbers haloed in lens flares decorated the snack bar. Arthur was a friendly, lanky guy who could have been Vince Carter's kid brother. He met us at the registration desk, gave us towels and waivers to sign. By the time we'd dried off and changed, he was already speaking in front of a small group of beginners three other couples, in addition to ourselves. Obediently, we lined up in front of a training wall where Arthur talked us through harnessing up and tying ourselves in. I had on my regular mesh workout shorts, but when I tightened my straps, I was shocked at how noticeable my junk was. It wasn't so bad for David, who was wearing black. Gee willikers, he said. Don't, I said. He started to giggle. I gave him the finger. I pushed my leg straps down on my thighs and did my best to keep my back to the others. It came time to practice belaying, and I went up the wall first. It was an easy enough climb to the top. When I let go and swung free, I was acutely conscious of the taut, creeping, creaking rope bearing my full weight and of my harness riding up higher than ever. As David lowered me down, I slowly revolved, my bulging crotch on display to the world like an overstuffed piñata. Then it was my turn to belay, and the first thing I noticed was how the equipment gripped David's ass. I didn't recall ever seeing him from this particular angle before and never strapped in like this. If women had Victoria's Secret push-up bras, then gay guys had climbing gear. What with all the ropes and harnesses and grunting and straining, I was discovering rock climbing was one step sideways from a fulsome, fair smackdown. David's legs were his best asset, so I shouldn't have been surprised when, gawking up at him open-mouthed, I felt a swelling tension inside my shorts. I was mortified. Both my hands were full, and there was no way I could adjust myself. When Arthur called out to me to take in the slack, others turned to look. One girl glanced down in my direction and just plain stared. I wanted to say, Excuse me, my eyes are up here. 